It seems like it's been 40 weeks since you got 40 winks. Your back pain, unbearable. Tossing, turning, trying to find that pain-free position. And that's the moment you realize you can't spend another waking moment putting off treatment. The Joint and Spine Center is Cincinnati's leading destination for spine care with a ton of surgical and non-surgical treatments for back pain. So when a moment has the power to change the rest of your life, go to the one place with the power to change it for the better, the Christ Hospital Health Network. This changes everything. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 585, how Sarah went from weight loss surgery to personal trainer and nutrition coach. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. Thank you so much for listening to The Pound This Podcast. I'm Amanda Valentine, returning guest. It's been a hot minute in a pre-COVID world when we were able to meet in person in Denver. <laughs> Is Sarah Dola from Sarah D Fit with me? What's going on, lady? Hey, girl. <laughs> it's weird to see you virtually. I wish I was seeing you in my kitchen again. I know, right? Oh, man, because I, I visited Denver um, May last year and hiked the sand dunes to record a podcast at the top of those, and then we got to hang out. But like, we met in such a, a weird way because of this podcast, because you um, followed me because of Jill Christine, correct? Like, it didn't, isn't that how yep. you found me? There's like, Jill? It's, like, it's like seven degrees to Amanda right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you followed Jill and then you heard Jason Theobald on my podcast. Um, and then you hired Jason as your coach. And I, if you want to kind of go into the backstory of that, I'll let you pick it up from there, from where you know, where you've been with, you know, for people that haven't heard your previous podcast with, with your weight and your body issues and kind of what led you up to the point of finding Jason on my podcast. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so I basically struggled with my weight, binge eating, you name it. I tried it as far as the diets, nothing ever worked for an extended period of time. Um, it got to the point that I decided I think in my early twenties, I said, I'm going to put my head down and do the work no matter what. And, and I did, and I beat, beat the shit out of my body. Um, and I got to a weight that was still not desirable for me. And I had to work far too hard to have it. And so I honestly threw in the towel and I thought, thought that I was just meant to be fat, that I was the fat girl that I didn't have, that I wasn't the lucky one that got to be fit and lean and all of those things. And I totally gave up. Um, then I remember in 2016, going to a doctor's appointment and you know, the dreaded, you have to get on the scale at the doctor's office. Um, and I did, and it was a number that I'd never seen before. Um, and I remember sitting down with my mom waiting to get labs after the appointment and looking at her and saying, I just wish I could get a fucking lap band. And, um, so I looked into bariatric surgery and in August of 2016, I had the vertical sleeve gastrectomy. I thought my prayers were answered. I thought that this was my cure. I will physically not be able to binge eat. So I am going to be a okay. Um, well, little did I know that um, old habits would come back, that my restriction would loosen, um, that it's far from a cure and that I actually did more harm, I think, than good, to be honest with you. Um, I was severely under eating, binging on the weekends. Um, and I knew that I needed help. And, you know, I just, I felt like I was going to end up where I started. Um, and so I was looking for a coach. Um, I knew that I needed help and I, I saw all these people on, on the internet, you know, we see, see it, millions of coaches on the internet. Um, and I came across your podcast because I followed Jill Christine and I loved all of her recipes and workouts and all of that stuff. Um, and I started listening to you religiously and, and the timing was perfect and the stars aligned and you had Jason on. Um, and I liked everything that he had to say. I liked his approach, um, to, uh, focusing on being healthy from the inside out. Um, he's clearly a master of his craft. Um, and I reached out to him and I gave him probably the longest intake form he's ever seen. Um, and, um, and he taught me how to fuel my body, um, and how to eat for my goals, train for my goals. Um, and to be honest, he changed my life. He saved my life. Um, you know, so I, am forever grateful for him and, and for you for, for introducing to me to him, even though it, uh, it, it happened in a roundabout way there. Um, it, it truly did change my life. So you changed my life too, girl. Oh, well, <laughs> um, I'm super happy that this podcast could do that for you. Cause I mean, it, yeah, I mean, that's this 
the point of me doing it, this is to create connections for people, and the, which is exactly why I want to have you on, so people can resonate with your story that might reach out to you for help. But I mean, I just think that's amazing. And I know when Jason first told me about you, it was like a couple months after you hired him. He's like, oh, he's like, I, I'm working with this girl that found me from your podcast. He's like, she was super under eating and I got her eating more and she's losing weight now. I'm like, what? That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like we live in this world of like eat less, move more. Or it's just your willpower and all of these things. And it's just not true. Um, once you understand how your body works and you understand hormones and thyroid and all these things, you can really see that it's not your willpower. Your body can be working against you in a lot of ways. Um, so I, I mean, I'm eternally grateful to you and, and to him. It's, um, I, I, I can't thank you enough. And, um, having that experience and seeing, um, what, what an impact that a person had on my life, it really inspired me to help others. Um, on top of the fact that I became completely obsessed with learning everything, nutrition and training that there is to learn, um, and so, you know, might as well pay it forward and share my obsession and use it for, use it for good. <laughs> well, yeah. Well then just to, before we get into, to your coaching with you and Jason, so kind of walk me through what the past couple of years has looked like for you coaching with him. Cause I mean, you last time we talked, which was almost geez, so like a year and a half ago, like you're like, I'm going into some bikini competitions. That is still the plan if my damn glutes would just grow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the truth is, is that um, I've been with G. I, when did you have Jason on the podcast? Like three years ago? Oh, my God. It was almost three years ago. It was the beginning of 2018. Okay. So then, so I started working with it. Like he was on the podcast, I think in January or February. And I started working with him in March, like right afterwards. Um, so I've been with him for a while now. I took a little hiatus. I went to another coach. I had grasses greener syndrome and it's not. Um, but I had never been coached before. So I, so it was, you know, it was a good experience for me to go elsewhere and see how good I had it. Um, but so when I came to Jason, I was, I don't know, eating like 800 calories and two hours in the gym, an hour of lifting, an hour of cardio. And I was like banging my head against the wall. Um, I, on top of the fact that I wasn't losing the weight that I so desired to lose, um, the, the important part is I wasn't losing the fat that I really wanted to lose. Um, you know, I was so caught up on this look and thought it was, connected to a number. And now, you know, years later, I know that the look and the number really don't ever coincide. Um, but so he taught me how to reverse diet, which is, is essentially adding calories um, slowly so you can get your met metabolism to boost, put muscle on um, and keep fat gain at bay. Um, so we reverse dieted for, I don't know, maybe like nine months um, until I was in a healthy caloric range. Um, I fought him tooth and nail the every every chance I got. I wanted to diet constantly, um, but he he was he was very you know firm handed with me and said like this is what we're doing this is why we're doing it. You didn't get here overnight. Um, we had a lot of hormonal work to do as well. Um, and then from there, um, I've gone through like a couple of little mini cuts, but I haven't done anything crazy. I really haven't like seriously dieted in a long time, and I continue um, to make really awesome improvements um, through fueling my body. Um, so then I, I found myself at a bodybuilding show about two years ago in like a high school gym. And I was, I was like, I, I, I saw all the girls. Um, obviously I had an inkling that I wanted to do it, which is why I showed up. And, uh, and when I walked out, walked out of that gym, I sent Jason a message and I said, I think I want to do this. Do you think I could do this? And he said, hell yeah, you could do this. <laughs> um, so now, so probably in the next year, maybe in the next year and a half, um, I told him that I don't want to do it. I don't want to like get on stage just to get on stage. I want to get on stage and be competitive. Um, so that takes time to put on the muscle that I need to. Um, it's hard to get a booty on me. So we're working on it. I understand that pain. <laughs> <laughs> Flat ass forever over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in no hurry though. I want to do it the right way and I want to do it the healthy way. I'm not trying to do anything crazy and extreme. There's no, there's no time pressure. So how, at what point did you decide, you know what, I want to start coaching people? So it's funny. It kind of happened organically. Like I became obsessed with the information. Um, and then I just started like I, conversations would, would come up and people started reaching out to me for help because I was putting information out there. Um, and then it just got to the point that it was like, I should probably make this a real thing. Um, and so I started bringing clients formally on, um, about two years ago, I want to say now. Um, and since then, I mean, my business has grown like crazy. I have an amazing group of women. Um, 
but really it's, it's kind of crazy how it happened. It's, I mean, my business is hundred percent referral based all word, word of mouth. Um, and it's just, it's exploded. <laughs> well, and I know that on your Instagram page, I've seen, we were talking about this before we started recording. I'm like, oh my God, there's just like so many women and like you to share all their success stories. And I'm like, and seeing everybody just like crush their goals is just super awesome and rewarding. And especially like with you and having that history of living through this and then now helping other women go through it. Like I just can't even just imagine like how much it just like makes your heart want to explode. <laughs> it's the best thing ever, Amanda. Honestly, like I swear that this is my calling. This is what I am meant to be who uh, like, this is just, this is what I'm meant to do. Um, and nothing is more rewarding than, than seeing people like find their happy, healthy and figure out how to do it in their lifestyle in a sustainable way, not to have food control them. Um, I mean, really nothing could be more rewarding than the work that I do. I truly love it. So whenever you get a client, kind of walk me through the whole process from the point of like somebody's listening to this podcast and you're like, you know what, Sarah's my chick. I think that like she could help me. Like whenever you heard Jason, they're like, okay, so what steps are, are we going to walk through now? Sure. So I highly recommend you stalk me. Um, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah D fit with me.com or Sarah D underscore fit with me on Instagram. Um, and I, there's a, I, I post obviously, like you said, a lot of my clients, um, from there, I, I'll, I will, I'm happy to chat whether you want to chat via DM email on the phone, any of that stuff. Um, my intake forms are very thorough. You have seen them. Um, and then from there, I really always suggest, please let me hook you up with another girl on the team because nobody can tell you better about the program than somebody that's in the program. Um, so typically I will get an idea of kind of like who you are, what age and stage of life that you're in and find some women that are, you know, from similar paths. Um, I will say that it's crazy, the community that I would love to take credit for, but the women have totally created like this amazing culture within our team. Um, the support and the camaraderie um, and even like the recipe swapping. It's like, it's all very cool. We have a private Facebook group. Um, so that's awesome. I would definitely hook people up with other girls on the team. Um, and then from there, it's just a matter of getting the information back to me. Um, once I have everything back to you, you will get, um, you will get like general information, like macro guides, just, um, check and format, that kind of stuff. Um, and then two days before you start, I will send you your plan outline, um, where I respond directly to everything in your questionnaire. Um, I will talk through any labs that you've sent to me. Um, I will talk through any lifestyle things and anything that's going on, I cover it. Um, and then I usually say, take two days to read through everything, ask questions, um, prepare so that you can get off to a strong start on day one. So usually it takes about um, maybe like a week to onboard somebody. So I know that probably a lot of people's questions would be like, okay, so are we calorie counting? Are we macro counting? Um, are you planning my workouts for me? Like what, you know, what do I have to think about? <laughs> you got it. Um, so everything is macro counting based. Um, but you know, I think it's interesting because everybody likes to throw this whole macro counting thing around. Um, and I think macro, obviously I do it. Um, I think it's awesome because it teaches you the nutritional value of foods and it gives you food freedom. Um, whereas when you can learn how to incorporate less nutritious things into your diet and still stay on your plan guilt-free. Um, there is absolutely a learning curve. It is a brand new skill. Um, and I think that people, what gets lost in this macro counting, if it fits your macros world, is everybody just wants to make it a Tetris game of like, how can I have Chipotle every day? How can I fit a donut in? Um, and what I want to do is I teach you how to eat. I'm going to teach you how to build balanced meals through macro counting and then incorporate those treats when appropriate. But it's it's 90% whole food based. Um, I I, part of my intakes forms, there's a food list. So I know all of your favorite things so I can help you to build your menu. Um, everything's done through my fitness pal. I uh, will we'll share login information so I can log in and I can help you with your diary. But I teach you how to build balanced meals at, through macro counting. Um, but the goal is that if you don't want to macro count one day, you can still build your meals and maintain your results. Um, the goal is for me, for you to not need me, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, so my goal is to teach you the why behind everything. And I feel like if you're going to do anything, you should know why you're doing it. Um, so I take the, the role of teacher very seriously. Um, and I want everybody to understand their programming and everything behind it. Um, so that was a really long winded answer, but I feel like macro counting just gets so like bastardized um, when it's really like such a beautiful thing and a really great way to find food freedom and really understand nutrition. 
Um, so sorry, that was like the longest answer. Oh no. How <laughs> nutrition goes. Um, but nutrition is like the biggest part of it, as you know. Um, and I feel like there's just like so much crap out there and nobody ever teaches you how to really do something in a way that you can do it for the rest of your life. So I, I'm like very, very focused on that in the program. Um, and then everything is through an app-based program called Trainerize. I put your workouts in there as well. Um, and then from there, I, there's guided videos on form and then I write in additional cues. Um, another service that I offer that I love when people take advantage of is people will send me videos of them executing exercises and I will send you videos back with any cues um, or corrections so I can really help with form specific to that client. That's awesome. So I know that, um, you know, since you've had gastric sleeve done, do you, a lot of your clients, have they also had weight loss surgery? So I would say probably like, I think it's probably about half and half um, have had uh, either the sleeve or bypass um, I've had some that have lost weight naturally and then have, um, have regained as well. Um, and then I have some people that have never dieted before. Um, so it's really not, it's not a one size fits all program. I kind of like kind of jokingly, but it really is call it like concierge coaching. Um, because I've never met a coach really that does the, that has the kind of services that I do, but I feel like it's so important to be readily available. Um, and I am for like any questions, comments, concerns. Um, I am, if I always say, if I'm awake, I can help you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, I think that's also so important that you can help the weight loss surgery community. Cause I know for me, like it, if I, when I get questions about that, I'm like, I can't answer that. Like I, let me refer you to someone who can, who ca has lived right. through that, um, and can, give you expertise. I'm like, I, all I can do is tell you what I, I read and I have some general knowledge, but I haven't lived through that. So I think that's, I think that's just so massively important for such a large group of people that, oh, I thought this was going to be the fix and it ended up not being the fix. Now who can help me? Right. I mean, have you seen the statistics? There's like, it's something like 60% of people gain their weight back after weight loss surgery. Yeah. It's, it's such a bummer. Cause it seems like such a painful process of like just relearning how to eat. And I, I don't know. I just hear the, the, you know, the horror stories of throwing up and I've watched my 600 pound life, even though that is the extreme right. of, of, you know what I mean? But it's just kind of like, I, I mean, I know how tortured I feel of just gaining weight and then losing it and having to and gain it back again and losing it and like how much that sucks. But I'm like, I also didn't go through the pain of surgery to lose weight, to regain, and then have to go through that. I can't even imagine just like the double pain of having to relose it after yeah. that experience. That sounds like hell. <laughs> well, I think that like part of it is that it just like puts the part, puts the cart before the horse a little bit because you're like forced into this compliance. So like you're going to lose weight initially, but you never really like deal with the lifestyle stuff and the stuff in your head and all of that, those things. And so once the restriction loosens up, like all of that stuff comes back and they don't tell you that, nor do they, I have one client who was given the proper tools nutrition wise to succeed. Oh, that's sad. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, man. And I mean, it feels like it, it almost feels like you need a therapist to get through that stuff too, because so much of it is mental. Like for, right. I mean, I don't know anybody that has issues with food or eating or weight that it doesn't have some psychological component to it. It's not just like, Oh, I just love food. I can't stop. It's always tied to something. Well, absolutely. I mean, like food is so many things. It can be a source of, source of pleasure and pain and it can be medicine and healing and, you know, it can be used and abused also, but um, I think that that is something that is so overlooked and it's interesting. Most bariatric surgery uh, centers require you to have like a psych evaluation. I can tell you for mine that I literally, like I, I was like crying in this woman's office and she was like, yeah, sure. You're fine. Your insurance <laughs> covers it. You're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long ago has it been now since you had your surgery? So I had surgery August, 2016. Did you ever regain from that or did, were you only in that like um, 800 calorie phase? So I put, so my, my lowest weight is actually below when I was eating that 800 calories. Um, but through my reverse diet with Jason, I put on about 15 pounds, but I looked better. So I would lie if I said that the 15 pounds wasn't like very upsetting to me because like, you know, like once you lose weight, if you start putting, if that number starts going up, that's like, you know, you failed. 
Um, but the truth of the matter was, is like, I had to repair my metabolism. I had to repair my hormones. Um, and if you looked at, and I'll send you a picture after we're done. Um, if you looked at my side-by-sides of the beginning of my reverse diet to the end of my reverse diet, excuse me, um, I was 15 pounds heavier, but I looked 15 pounds lighter. And that just goes to show you that like the scale is not everything. (laughs) Oh, for sure. I mean, you look freaking amazing now. And I know that you're working on it. It was so worth it. Like it was so worth it to put on the 15 pounds. It was so, I, I would, I would do it all over again with hindsight being 2020. I know. It's just, I think that's one of those things too, that I think that it depends on where you're at in your own journey, that I think that for a long time you're, you'll people hear people say that and you're like, what abs until like you live through it. And then you're like, Oh, okay. And now I, I shouldn't just be like killing myself mentally every day over gaining an extra pound of like, you know, you can eat some, you can have some carbs. It's going to be okay. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. I'm like the carb queen now that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what puts muscle on my body. Oh, okay. Well, I've been trying, um, just like uh, no particular reason. And I'm not even going to say I'm going to do it forever, but it's just been feeling good right now. It's just a, I'm eating more of a pescatarian diet. And oh, yeah. so, and there's, I mean, I've been eating way more carbs than normal. I'm not eating like crap carbs, but I'm, I'm working myself through that as a mental experiment for me because I, I, I don't like eliminating carbs completely. I always give myself some, but I'm still restrictive on them. And I'm like, what if it's okay that you can have a salad with chickpeas on it? Like you can have like right. more, you can have levels of carbs and don't worry about it. So this has been, it's been a weird experiment for me to be like, I'm eating healthy foods but I'm so indoctrinated and trained to think of like, oh, but it's too many carbs. I know. I know. It's crazy. Like I, I have some clients that have that, that I, and I would say myself included for a long time. Now, now I said I'm the carb queen, but that you just feel like the second you eat this, it's, it's, it's all over. And this is, and it gets into that good and bad thing. And like, I always say that my rule is that no food is off your menu unless it doesn't agree with you and gives you digestive upset. Aside from that, it's on your menu. There's no reason why you can't eat it. Um, you know, we learn the nutritional values of foods. This is why I'm such a fan of macro counting. So you know what a proper plate and portion looks like for you. But there's no reason why anybody should be avoiding food groups. I mean, I just, I don't see the point in it. Well, speaking of digestive issues, I know that Jason does, you know, runs everybody through a lab when they start working together. Do you do that too? I do request labs. I don't require it like Jason does, but I can tell you that everybody that takes advantage of it um, has an edge. See, I've never done that before and I'm really curious about it. So like what, how does that process look like? And like, what do you learn from it? Sure. So, um, I I basically asked for like typical, like normal CMP, um, labs that are looking at like vitamin D or platelets, all that fun stuff. Um, but then what I really am digging into is your hormones. So I want to be looking at your estrogen progesterone ratio, um, And mostly because I want to see if you're estrogen dominant, which is I see in so many women and signs of being estrogen dominant um, will be carrying weight in your hips and thighs. Many women that have PCOS, um, hard time losing weight. It can be tied to anxiety and depression. Um, So there are a lot of things there. And the second thing that I look at um, are thyroid labs. Um, I should say the second, like number two (laughs) of importance Um, and thyroid labs I want to look at because obviously I want to see the thyroid function. But overall with labs, this is the thing that I see that's that's such a problem. First of all, many doctors don't run the labs that we actually need to look at to see the whole picture. Secondly, they rarely will request for you to run them at the right time. If you want to see what's going on with your hormones, you should be in the luteal phase of your cycle. So 19 to 21 days post first bleed is when you should be getting your labs. If not, the hormone labs are totally useless, truthfully speaking. Um, the other thing that I will see is a lot of times that they won't run the full thyroid panel. So I forever was told my thyroid is fine because my doctor had only run TSH. So TSH is your thyroid stimulating hormone. Um, it tells you how much of the hormone that your pituitary is producing. Fine. Great. So a lot of us will come back normal there. Um, but what we don't look at is our free T4 and free T3, which will show us how the body is using it because T4 is your non-usable hormone, T3 is your usable, and the body needs to convert it from 4 to 3 in order for it to be used. Um, So I always ask for a full panel. Um, Most doctors are very cool about running it, but if not, um, I have a remote clinic that I work with that will order it through a local lab, like a LabCorp or Quest, 
um, and do it remotely. But um, I always say that like, if you're trying to be optimally healthy, um, why wouldn't you wanna have all the information? Um, and a lot of women that come to me with disordered eating and eating disorder histories and that have dieted many times, um, that there are more answers there. And it's not just a, you don't have any willpower situation. There are things that are going on inside of your body that are making this harder for you to do. Yeah. See, I would love that information. I went to my primary care, mm, I say last year. And I said, like, I want to run like a full panel blood work. Like, let's see, I want to see what's going on in there. And it was just all just the generic stuff. And the, it was the, the thyroid thing too. It's like, it looks fine. But it's like no digging into anything. And I'm like, oh, well, how do, right. I'm like, how do I even request that? And they're like, you don't <laughs> like, OK, well, so there like there are like some buzzwords that you can use. But like also a lot of times they'll look at like numbers that are just in the range and they won't look at how the whole body system like the systems all work together. Um, like, for example, like your estrogen, your progesterone might be in range but you need to go through a, a formula, your estrogen progesterone ratio to see how your body is metabolizing that. Um, so it's just, you know, I don't think that doctors are evil, um, but something that Jason says that I think is so true is that doctors are here to keep you alive. They're not here to optimize your systems. Um, and, and I, that's true. I mean, like they're not trying to, they, they care about you being like healthy enough to be alive. They don't care about you being fit and lean in the gym. You know, yeah. that's not what they're trained in. They go to nutrition class for like, you know, a week or something. Um, it's just not their specialty. They have to know so many other things. Totally. So like, how does that work then? So like, let's say that I, I'm just started working with you. We want to run all of these. Do I have to order a kit or something or do I contact my doctor? How does that work? So I send you a list and I usually say, start with your doctor because that's your best bet of getting, getting it covered by insurance. Um, through the intake forms, I send you um, like a hormone, thyroid, um, adrenal and gut questionnaire. And based off of that, uh, we can have some buzzwords to use with your doctors so that they can code it for insurance. Um, some doctors will not play ball and that's just the truth. Um, and that for that, I usually use lifeextensions.com. Um, if you go on their website, it's called the comprehensive weight loss panel, I believe. Um, and it goes on sale from time to time. I just saw the price go up. It was like, I think it was like in the high two hundreds and it was just like in the low two hundreds. So it seems to bounce around. Sometimes there's a code, um, but that one, they will run every single thing that you need. Um, and they, uh, they'll like order it through your local, like lab core request somewhere that's, that's nearby to you. So do you work with a, a lot of women that have things like PCOS? I do. I, I work with many more that are misdiagnosed with PCOS. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I just know that from, you know, as much as I've, uh, through Instagram and have talked to the PCOS community or have been asked questions that they're just, and I've done podcasts before with dietitians of like, I just cannot lose weight. And it's just, it seems like this impossible puzzle for some women to unlock and to figure out. So I, again, that's just things so important uh, that you work with these women and help them figure out something where they think just thought like, oh, well, there's just no hope. I have PCOS, so I just can't lose weight. Right. I, I you know, I have PCOS too. Um, but it's interesting because I kind of think, or I had PCOS, I should say, um, and I even had like a ultrasound and I saw that my ovaries looked like marbles glued together. Um, and so I was like, yep, definitely have it. But after I lost weight, um, it was never mentioned. And I, I now knowing what I know and looking at labs, like there's no way, like if you have PCOS, you're androgen dominant, meaning that your testosterone would be high. Um, and my testosterone is low always. I have to supplement with it, um, to even bring me up to normal ranges. So I, and I do see that a lot. Um, I have, I have women that have legitimate PCOS as well, but <laughs> I think that is misdiagnosed. That's a label that people put on things a lot if, for hormonal issues. IBS is a label that is put on things a lot. Um, and it's just, you know, I think sometimes it's just people would rather have a diagnosis than like actually dig into what's going on. Yeah. And it just seems like there's just so much. You know what I mean? And there's just like, how do you sift through all of this information? You do one Google search on it. How do you know what's oh, totally. real and what's not? And it's just, just an information dump that you're just kind of like, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it is overwhelming. And um, Jason taught me how to read, lab, read labs. Um, Jeff Sue and I also have talked to talk labs before. Um, and when I go through a lab read, I'm, I'm not going to like come back to you with very vague things and take all these supplements. I'm going to tell you, I will go line by line through your lab report and tell you everything that I'm seeing, 
um, and go through it. And then I, if there are supplement recommendations that I have, I will make them it's your decision if you want to move forward on that front. Um, but like I explain it in depth and I kind of decode it because it is so confusing. Yeah. I mean, just like all of this conversation of like how in depth you are. I mean, I, I've, I already knew this about you, but I, I also want to know, you know, is now that people are listening and, and how involved you are of whenever you see so many just like coaches on Instagram. I mean, how does it, I mean, I already know the answer to this, but like, oh just God. like <laughs> how that make you feel, because it feels like most of these, that's, you know, which is exactly why I want to highlight people like you on this podcast for people that are looking for a coach, because if you just hop on social media and you look at somebody that's a coach, are these people going to run you through these labs? Are they going to look down everything and, and recommend the right supplements for you? Are they going to do all this stuff? The answer most likely is no. <laughs> and honestly, Amanda, the way that I feel about that is shame on you. Shame on you for, for telling people, for, for taking people's health, which is a very serious thing, into your hands and, you know, and, and throwing them on extreme diets and having them pound on their body. So you're like, shame on you. Who, why, why would you ever do that? And I just think that, that, that it's really a shame that it's so prevalent in the coaching community because there are so many good coaches. Um, and yes, there are different kinds of coaches. There are more coaches that are more lifestyle based and they're not going to do lab reads. And that doesn't mean that they're a bad coach. Um, but I think that these like hardcore nutrition coaches that aren't looking at the full picture and that don't, that clearly don't take people's health seriously. It, I mean, it, it really bothers me. <laughs> Well, yeah, totally. I mean, it really bothers me too. That's why I brought it up because I, I knew we we could <laughs> we oh could God. we could jive on this topic. But it's just, I just think it's so so dangerous. And not only that, just people that have this like basically pre programmed one sheet of like, oh, you're joining this. Here's the one thing, and right. everybody's doing the exact same thing. And how much money are you spending on that? Of you know, just for people that if you are in the market, you're struggling, and you need somebody to, and it, which again, always ask for help if you need help to kind of do some research on that just because they got a hot smoke and bod and they have a lot of followers doesn't mean that they are going to be necessarily the right person for you. Right. Um, and if anybody is listening and they are looking for a coach and I'm not your flavor, I know lots of great coaches and I'm so happy to refer you. Um, I think that another part of being a good coach is surrounding yourself with other good coaches. Um, so we have a great network. Um, and really, truly, if I am not your cup of tea, that is cool. But if you're looking for help, I'm happy to provide referrals. Yeah. And I mean, I just think that it's so important to, I mean, especially after this year. I mean, that's another question I want to ask you, too. Um, with the clients that you have, have you noticed anybody just hitting the struggle bus even harder because 2020? You know, I've had people go both ways. I've had some people that have said that this is like their opportunity to like really buckle down and make a change. And I have some that have, have struggled. Um, I would say that in this stage, as since we've been living this COVID life for so long, um, that I probably like the very beginning, I had like two of my OG clients that like really struggled um, with being home, but they're, they're fine now. I mean, we worked through it. Um, I'm not really one to beat people up. I don't really take the, the boot camp approach. Um, I, I work with adults, not children. So, <laughs> um, so I, you know, it's my job to support and to educate, um, and also to communicate like a huge part of having a healthy co coaching relationship is having an honest line of communication. Um, and if you're, if I was going to beat somebody up, that does not encourage somebody to be honest with me. And if I don't know what's going on, I can't help. So, um, I'm never one to, to beat people up. And, um, you know, every single woman that's had any real hiccup with COVID, they, everybody's really rolling now. Um, I should like knock on wood or something, but everybody's kicking ass. <laughs> yeah. I just, it, I just know so, so many people for a loop, especially with gyms being closed for a while. And then, I mean, also depending on where you're at in the country and where you live yeah. and what the regulations are there. And then like, I know for me, I am a total struggler of working out at home. Like I want to love it. And I, I just you. like can not. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't. I don't want to love it. <laughs> I had. I had to work at home for like maybe two months, and we like pieced together what, whatever gym equipment we could find at like Dick's and Walmart and whatever. We have like one adjustable Bowflex dumbbell, um, and it got to the point like by week two I was over it, and we had I think it was a full eight weeks that we had to work out at home. 
um, it was rough. <laughs> yeah. But some people, I mean, again, like you said, some people are just super thriving in it where some people didn't work out at all. And all of a sudden they found online videos or they're getting a Peloton or anything else. And they're like, holy crap, like I, this makes sense to me. And that's where I'm like, oh man, I like just wish that was my jam because I, I'm like stuck at home all the time now and then I can just work out all the time. <laughs> but I'm like, I just can't, I've tried yeah, to I do. I mean, I, it was, there was definitely that like feeling of like, this, like, this is what I do and it's only an hour and I'm just going to do it. Um, and sometimes workouts are like that for me anyway. Like, I mean, I, sometimes it's just like, okay, it's on my calendar and this is what I'm going to do. And by the time it's over, I'm glad I did it. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, that's such a, a, a great point too, with this whole lifestyle where, you know, so many people are like, I just don't have the motivation. It's like, well, you're not always going to have the motivation there. It's the right. consistency of just like, yeah, well, you know what, maybe just do it for 15 minutes. Just something is better than nothing of, you know, just, you're never going to be like, oh, I, I hated myself for working out for 15 minutes or, you know what I mean? Or just like showing up to the gym when I didn't want to. Right. That's what's hard though. Totally. Just make I mean, yourself like, I, do it. Um, totally. I, I totally feel that way. I, I really like look at it as it's just, it's part of who I am and it's part of what I do. And I like the way it makes me feel. And I like the way that it makes me look. Um, and when I'm in the gym every day, am I like, hell yeah, this is the best workout ever. Like, no, I'm not. But like, I feel, you know, once I'm there, I do it. Like I, I go through the motions. It's a really good time for me to be present more than anything, because I'm always talking to other people and on screens all day. So it's really like a good me time. Um, and then, like I said, once it's over, I'm like, I feel so good. And I'm so, so glad that I did it. And it's fun to see your shoulder pump after your shoulder day, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's fun. <laughs> so if somebody is, has listened to this podcast and they're like, Oh man, I gotta, I gotta check Sarah out. I want to know more. I, I want my labs done. <laughs> <laughs> what's the best way you said stalk you find you on Instagram find you online what, what are all the things yeah so Instagram I'm Sarah D underscore fit with me um my website is Sarah D fit with me um and then my email address is Sarah D fit with me at gmail.com so lots of Sarah D fit with me's yeah. um but whatever mode of communication is easier I'm cool with dms emails phone calls whatever um it makes no difference to me awesome and I'm gonna put all the information in the show notes and, um, and hopefully people reach out to you, especially I think as we're going into the holidays, I think that where most people will be like, I'm going to wait till January. If they're going to have this on their mind, I'd say that, I mean, now is the best yeah. time. I mean, even better. So right now I am running a promo that goes through the end of the month. Um, my spooky season sale. Um, so that's posted on my Instagram. There are a couple of great opportunities, a little discount to get you started. Um, and yeah, I think that I, the, the timing is great right now to just kind of get, get the habits in place and walk into the new year feeling good. No reason to throw away the last couple months. Yeah, heck yeah. And then I, I just love right. this to do it at this time of year to be like, if I can get through these holidays and, you know, stick to what my goals are, like then you can, I mean, the rest of the new year is going to be a breeze then, right? If, if everybody, if this, this is the time that's going to test you the most, but you just like motor right through it at the time that you're just starting out and you're the most like, yeah, <laughs> like it just feels like yeah, it's your great jump start. Yes. You gotta, it's a good time to set the tone. That's for sure. Awesome. Um, but, and that, but the other, you know, you, we've both been in this game a long time. There's never going to be a perfect time. So it's just, you got to just start. Right. It doesn't have to be a Monday. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> well, I'm like so incredibly proud of you. I'm so happy that like we we have this connection that's been going on for years now, which is like absolutely amazing. And that you're doing so many amazing things and helping so many people, including myself. You've helped me a ton this year. Um, right back at you, doll. Which I am so grateful for. So I just think that you are just such an amazing human. <laughs> and then for, uh, if, uh, if I can send people your way, that's what I want to do because I know that, you know, you just have this just beautiful heart that wants to help people and, uh, you're just doing such an well, awesome job. It takes one to know one girl. Aww. Um, thank you for having me on again. And I hope that let's, I hope there's a next time and I hope it's in person again. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we will talk soon then. Cool. Thank you. For info on health coaching and more, go to amandavalentinebites.com.